been the heartbreak of all this is these little kids come up to you. You get my daddy out. You get my mama out. Thank you. Thank you very much. We ain't done shit except what we are supposed to do. We stick together. Speaking of COC, been a lot of trash talk on COC. A lot of putting COC down on different ways on Richard Lester. What Bill Smith does for you, what they do for you. Do you know the first four days of this, we could not find out anything if it wasn't for COC sending lawyers in there. They sent every penny that they spent sending lawyers in there, <clears throat> going in and talking to Paul, going in there talking to OneWire, talking to some of these others just to see if they're okay. Richard did that. He was our first responder. This would not exist without him. I would not be here for y'all without him. The banditos would still be like they were. They changed me. They showed me that there is rights being taken away from everybody, and it takes somebody like me to get you to understand. Because not everybody can get everybody to follow. Not everybody can get everybody to listen. I have a gift. Y'all listen to me. It was meant to be like they were meant to be. On that note, I want to bring up one that we couldn't do it with in Texas without. The reason Texas is strong, large, and in, proud, and in charge is because of our lawyer. No matter what we ask of him, he don't say that might get me in trouble. He don't say that's going to cost me money and my gas. He don't ask me anything. He tells me, you need it right now? And he drops whatever he's doing, and he gets there. His business, for the first week of Waco, his business fell quite a bit probably because I kept him. He didn't get to get away. They want to interview me, not without Bill there. They want to talk to me about something. They need a lawyer's advice. It's Bill. Bill has done everything for us. He is our biker. He is our lawyer. He is our brother. Bill. since then, whether it's DFW, West Texas, San Antonio, whatever, and I see more enthusiasm, I see more focus, I see more energy that you all understand that we've been doing this, Jimmy's been doing this, the board's been doing this for many years, and while it's unfortunate it took an event like Waco to bring everyone together to really unite and to be strong and to assert their rights, at least maybe something good will come of it. And I uh, uh, anticipate that the COCs will get stronger, they'll get more bold, they'll get more done, we'll have more members, and we'll be a much larger force to deal with in the state of Texas. And if other states follow our lead, which they've had, which they've done, that it will increase across the United States. So I applaud everyone for being here, not being scared, refusing to, uh, to, to put down their colors. I think everyone, you need to applaud and uh, praise yourself. Give everyone a round of And in that regard, we still have balance. For example, uh, income, a lot of it was taken up with the Save the Patch Fund and what's going on. Uh, the uh, Mongols were supposed to go to trial in June. It's been pushed off. They have a change of judge. So I, I, I see the, the tide attorney, the former judge, was clearly hostile to the Mongols' position. And uh, there have been some motions filed 
Finally, the judge said, I've had enough. I'll let somebody else handle this. I don't want to be accused of being partial. So, so they've got a new judge, a new schedule. And uh, in light of Waco, this is extremely important. Now, there's been nothing happening in Texas to take away anyone's patches. But if there's a victory in California, we can see that it could be used in other places and possibly even in Texas. That's why it's so important to stay strong, stay together, stay focused. Uh, high energy uh, in order to fight the battle. Uh, on a more local level, uh, some people have been pulled over, uh, dogs, uh, that sort of thing. You need to really video record your stops. Yes. It's very important. With the heightened scrutiny of anyone who wears a patch, I mean, they're looking for things. As Jimmy said, he goes through Waco on his bike, he's going to get arrested. You've got to have a video recording. We've seen over the last many months what a video recording can do about changing the conversation and enforcing someone's rights. You have an absolute right, while law enforcement is in public, to, to record their activities. Uh, they may tell you to move back, move, move to the side, don't interfere. You can't interfere, but you can record. Find a spot and record because it will only help. It won't hurt you unless you do something really stupid. But assuming that you don't, it's going to help you down the road. Uh, for example, uh, the Supreme Court recently said that you can't delay a person on the side of the road to call the dog. If they stop you for a traffic violation, uh, once that is ended, they can't hold you and wait for a dog. You've got to record all of that. So you have a time stamp, you know what's going on, and you can enforce your rights. Because more and more people wearing patches are getting stopped, harassed, and uh, in some cases arrested over bullshit. You need to record those stops to enforce your rights. Um, uh, just a couple of other issues. As you know, we hired a retired Texas Ranger to investigate. This is what we've done as AIM lawyers, COCs, to get to the bottom and get to the truth. We've heard so many stories, so many lies, so much bullshit coming out of Waco that we obviously don't trust them and we want an independent investigation. So our investigator has been working, he's been interviewing people, he's been looking at videotapes, uh, trying to identify people in videotapes, uh, and, and those sorts of things. And it's very costly, but it's well worth it, because at least we can get to the truth, and at some point use it to enforce the rights of bikers in Waco for civil rights violations. As you know, most of them, the vast majority of people there, were there for the meeting and the meeting alone. They got caught up in it while they were pulling in the parking lot. There was one, I believe, a leatherneck that was sitting having lunch with Don Carlos. When the shooting started, he sat, waited for it to stop. Police came in and arrested him on the same charge as everybody else. And he was just sitting there having lunch. He was engaged in organized criminal activity, and he had a bond of a million dollars. That's crazy. That's fucking crazy. <laughs> so we've hired the investigator. He's working. Uh, as I said, he's been interviewing people. And I also want to ask if you or anyone you know have any information, you saw anything, you witnessed anything, you heard anything that might be important, might be relevant, please let us know. Also, just so you'll know, he's going to keep everything confidential. Your name will not be released. In his final report, we arranged it so that there will be no names in it, there will only be number, and I'm the only one that's going to have the identity of that person. So that, uh, I mean, he's going to know it, of course, but in his report, he, he will not have a master list of 
people he's talked to. You'll identify him uh, in, a, in a, uh, a certain way, but no one's name is going to be released. So if you have anyone that uh, knows anything, uh, may have heard something, uh, let me know. Uh, I've got a link on my website. Email me uh, your name, the name of someone, or whoever I need to talk to to get permission to talk to them, because it's going to be very important. We want something as thorough as possible, and only with the help of everyone who witnessed it, saw it, heard it, heard, know somebody, uh, can we get to the bottom of it. Uh, also, uh, when you're out and about, I've got some rights cards. If you do get stopped, you can hand this to the officer or read it. It tells them about your rights, that you know your rights, and you're going to assert your rights. That's one of the things you must do. Even though you may have certain rights, if you don't assert them, you've waived them. You've given them up. So this will help you in a stop to know what your rights are uh, and to, to assert them. And as I said, if you get stopped, they want to keep you. Ask them if you're free to leave. If not, are you under arrest? Why are you being detained? They give you the ticket. Why can't I leave? So assert your rights. Lastly, uh, when you are traveling, the AIM lawyers have this app. You can download it to your phone, iPhone, uh, Android. Uh, locates the closest hospital, shop, road conditions, motorcycle towing, uh, a lot more. And uh, we have put together this Writer's Rights and Civil Liberties book. I do not have enough for everyone, uh, believe me. I don't even have enough for every club. They're going like crazy and we're trying to print more. So uh, the first clubs that come up after the meeting, each club I'll be happy to give you a book until they run out. And uh, obviously I'm going to try to get a bunch more and bring them to the meeting because I think this is important and something that everyone should have available to them, even if they don't keep it in their saddlebag, have it at the clubhouse or what have you. So uh, we're here to help you. If you have any questions, need anything, I'll be here after the meeting. Again, if you know anyone that has been involved in Waco or knows someone who's been involved, get me the information so at least we can uh, determine if they have any information that will help us. Thank you. Also, any of you that were involved and were there and it's out on bond or that's shot or that needs any help, before you go talk to any lawyers about your case, get up with Bill Smith. We're going to try to do a class action. We don't need a bunch of separate lawyers. Get up with him and let him help you. We raised $4,256. Yeah. I, think, I think there's one or two bikers out in the crowd. I do have a 1994 FXR out there, very cherry for $7,500. $1,000 will go to the cause. It's outside. I have nothing else, so I'm going to let Wes Brown get up here. He's got something him and Woody want to get up here and uh, present something, and then we're going to try to get this closed. Thank you, Jimmy. I've got a couple of things. Uh, we've got a bike night, a core bike night. We meet first Thursday every month at a brick house on 183 in Duval. We're in our second year. That's a little thing we got going on, but we did raise some money. Pastor Frank? We've got $560 raised at bike night for the fund. Yeah. 